Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm now answering question number six from the Mechanics M1 Solomon E paper. This is from the Edexcel collection on Solomon papers. It's also question number six as well from my end of topic worksheet on constant acceleration from Mechanics 1 from my um, Edexcel material. And um, this question would also be quite relevant to um, Cambridge um, M1, although the only difference would be the value of G used in Cambridge is 10 and in Edexcel is 9.8. Now, a boy kicks a football vertically upwards from a height of 0 0.6 meters above the ground. With a speed of 10.5 me 10 meters per second, the ball is modeled as a particle and air resistance is ignored. Find the greatest height above the ground reached by the ball. Okay, so in these type of questions, it's very important um, to get all your uh, ideas sorted out clearly in your mind about you know what you're going to take as positive and um, you know which direction to take as positive and things like that it's very very important for you to get those kind of things sorted out so here what i'm going to do i'm going to say all right let's 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 say that this is the ground over here this is the ground level okay let me get rid of that thank you without an arrow okay let's say this is the ground level that's the ground so the ball, the ball is not kicked from the ground. It's kicked from 0.6 uh, meters above the ground. All right. So it's not kicked from the ground, but 0.6 meters above the ground. So let's say this is 0.6 meters. Okay. So this is a level from which the ball is kicked. I'm going to call that O. Always the starting point is like O. All right. So that's going to be my starting point here, where it's kicked from. Now. It's going to be kicked, and that O is 0.6 meters above the ground. So I'm going to make that, or note that down, that it's 0.6 meters above the ground. So that distance between there and there is 0.6 meters, a vertical distance. So that's 0 0.6 meters. All right. Now, the ball is kicked with a speed of 10.5 meters per second. So its initial speed is 10.5 meters per second. It's going to be going upwards. Now it's going to go up and it's going to reach its maximum height when the velocity becomes zero, then it's going to come down again. So let me call that point which it reaches. Um, let me call that point, point A. Okay, that's the level that it reaches. Okay, and at that point, its velocity is going to be zero meters per second for an instant, it's going to come to instantaneous rest and then it's going to start falling down again, okay? So now, what I'm considering now is what's happening between O and A. Now the only force acting on it, because it says air resistance is ignored, is the force of gravity which acts downwards. So we know that gravity is acting downwards. So the acceleration is G towards the Earth, okay? Now I'm considering what's happening between the level O up to the level A. That's what I'm considering. That's my starting point and that's my ending point to answer this part of the question. All right now, because I will all I always take the direction in which something is moving at the start of the part of the journey that I'm considering as positive, I'm going to take up as positive. I don't always take up as positive. I'm going to take up as positive now because at the start, at the point O, I'm considering the start, it's going to be going upwards. Okay. And that's what I'm going to take as my positive. So now because we have constant acceleration, we can use the SUVAT equations. So I'm going to write SUVAT and I'm going to write down what things that I know. Okay. Now I have to find S that's going to be part of my answer. It's not going to be my final answer, as we'll see. But we, we need to find S to find the answer. U is 10 meters per second. 10.5, sorry, meters per second. And it's upwards. So I'm going to write this as 10.5. V is zero. Okay, it's going to be zero because it comes to instantaneous rest. A, I'm going to take as minus G. Okay, negative G. Because up is positive and G acts downwards. Okay, so if I'm, if I'm, if I'm answering this question in an LXL paper... I'm going to put negative 9.8. If it's a Cambridge paper, I'll put negative 10. That's all. And time, well, we don't need to know the time. That's not something that we need to know. But what we're concentrating here is we have to find what S is. If we find what S is, S basically in our diagram, S would represent this 
distance between O and A. That's what S is here. Okay, so in the end, we want the height above the ground. Our final answer will be the height above the ground, which would be basically from there all the way up to there. That's, our, that's going to be our answer, okay, which is basically S plus 0 0.6. But anyway, let's just find S first. So now we've got S, U, V, and A. So we need to find S. We've got to use U and V and A. We don't have T. So we can use the equation V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. In Cambridge, you don't need to memorize the formulas. They're given to you in the formula sheet. In Edexcel, you need to know them. They won't be given to you in the formula sheet. So you should know these, the formula. So V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So V is 0. U is 10.5. So you have 10.5 squared plus 2 times A, which is minus G times S, which is what I have to find. All right. So if I rearrange this, I have um, 2GS equals 10.5 squared. So I can say S is equal to 10.5 squared over 2 times G. So now... I'm going to answer this as a um, Edexcel paper, all right? Because this is for my Edexcel collection. So I'm going to put 10.5 squared over 2 times 9.8. If this was Cambridge, I'd put 20, 2 times 10. That's the only difference here. So the answer will be slightly different. So that's going to give me S, which is 5.625 times meters 5.625 meters now that's not my final answer because as i said we want to find the height above the ground which i'll call i'll call this capital h so the height above the ground is going to be given by s plus 0 0.6 so we have 5.625 plus 0 0.6 and that will give us our final answer so i'm going to add to this 0 0.6 and it gives us 6.225 so you end up with 6.225 meters which really we should round to um, 3sf or 2sf okay um, with edexcel 2sf or 3sf is acceptable cambridge always 3sf so 6.23 meters is the height that it reaches above the ground that's the greatest height above the ground all right 5.65 is the height above um where it was projected from but where they're asking for the greatest height above the ground so you add 0.6 to your answer so there's part a now for part b it says calculate the length of time for which the ball is more than two meters above the ground okay so now if we just use the same diagram okay so i'm going to use the same diagram except i'm going to make a, uh, just a couple of changes now i want to find the time, length of time for which it's more than two meters above the ground. So this is where it reaches its highest point. Now there's going to be a point somewhere between that because now we know that this S was two point something, six point, uh, sorry, five point six two five. So two meters is going to be somewhere between these two. So let's say I'm not making it like to any um, scale here, but let's say we're considering now this height above the ground here which we know is two meters above the ground okay so now the height we're considering is two meters above the ground okay above the ground okay so this is the height we're considering now two meters above the ground which is this here okay that's two meters above the ground so therefore the height that we're considering above o is going to be two minus 0 0.6 so two minus 0 0.6 is going to be 1.4 meters so it's 1.4 meters above O. okay now this is where let's call this point b so now i'm considering the the displacement between o and b remember s is the displacement it's not the total distance it's traveled okay so some people um, get mixed up with s s is the displacement it's how far out of position it is compared to where it started from now we're making the starting point O. Okay, we're making the starting point O. So I'm going to have S, U, V, A, T. I'm going to still take up as positive because when it starts from O, the starting point, it's going upwards. At this point, it's going upwards. Okay, at B, there's two, there's two situations. That'd be one, one situation when it's going upwards and the other situation when it's going down on the way back. 
So on the way up, as it goes past B, it's going to go upwards. On the way down, on the way uh, after it's gone up and come down again, it's going to be going downwards. But I'm considering the starting point. Okay, where it started point from, it started from O. And when it started from O, it was being kicked upwards. So up is positive in my calculation. So S is its displacement. It's a distance above O. And I'm taking up as positive. So it's going to be a positive displacement, 1.4. If I was considering you know, the time it took to get, for example, to a level below O, then I would take S as negative because it would be below O. But in this case, it's positive, so it's above O. So it's a positive, and I'm taking up as positive, you see. Uh, U is 10.5 meters per second. V, we don't know what it is. Okay, you're going to have um, one V on the way up, the other one V at the, other, on the way down, one will be positive, one will be negative, according to our calculations. And A is going to be negative G because we've taken up as positive, and, and gravity always acts downwards. And we've got to find the time, all right? So in this case, we don't really need what V is, but we need to use S, U, A, and T. And we know the equation we can use is S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So here we have 1.4 equals U times T, which is 10.5 times T plus a half times minus 9.8 times T squared. Okay, well, I'm going to put minus G for now. And I'll put the G in later on. So I'm going to put minus G. If it's Cambridge, you're going to use that as 10. If it's LXL, you're going to use that as 9.8. Okay, so now let's simplify this a little bit. Um, you're going to have, in fact, I'm going to use this because I'll use this as 9.8 from here. Okay, and then, you know, if you were doing Cambridge, you would use this as um, minus 10. So because this is, I'm answering this for a, an Excel end of topic worksheet, I'll use minus 9.8 from this stage because I think I'll need to from here start using it. So let's now, um, that's going to be minus 4.9, I think, minus 9.8 divided by 2 is minus 4.9. That's right, so you have uh, 1.4 equals 10.5t minus 4.9t squared. So let's look at this quadratic, 4.9t squared um, minus 10.5t plus 1.4 equals 0. So now, this looks like not very friendly. We could use a quadratic formula, but I'm going to check something first. Will these numbers become easier if I divide by 4.9 to get rid of that? Let's see what happens when I do 10.4 divided by 10.5 divided by 4.9. Does it give me a nice round number? 15 over 7. Okay, that's not bad. That's, that works. And 1.4 divided by 4.9. Also get this. Okay, good. So I can write this as t squared minus 15 over 7t plus, and we've got 2 over 7, 2 over 7 equals 0. So we can see here, if I multiply both sides by 7, I'll get 7t squared minus 15t plus 2 equals 0. So I could actually at this stage, one step, what, what most people would probably do is at this stage they would use the quadratic formula and get up with the answers. I've actually just saw what happens when you divide everything by 4.9. And it seems like we get numbers which are maybe easy to deal with. Maybe we can factorize this. I think we can. Because to factorize this, you've got to find two numbers that multiply to give you 14 and add to give you negative 15. So we're going to end up with two values of t. All right. So let's just do the factorizing. I like to do my factorizing of these type of splitting the middle term types visually. So I've got 7t squared on the top right and 2 on the bottom um, on the top left side, and two on the bottom right. These two numbers multiply to give me the same, um, the same product as these two numbers multiply to give me. And these two numbers must give me negative 15. So we've got two numbers multiplied to give you negative positive 14 t squared. And when you add them, you get minus 15 t. So it looks like it's going to be 14 and minus 14, minus 14 t and minus t. When you multiply them, you're going to get uh, my plus 14t squared, when you add them, you get minus 15t. That's correct. So we can take out the common factor um, in any of these rows or columns. Here we can see that 7t is a common factor in these two terms. And then I can use this to work out what the other numbers are. 7t times something has to give me this. That's t. That's 7t squared. 7t times something gives me this. Minus 14. That's a minus 2. And t times minus 1 gives me minus t. So we end up with 7t minus 1 and t minus 2 equals 0. So t is equal to 1 over 7, 
and t is equal to 2. Um, those would be the same two answers we would have got if we just used the quadratic formula from here. You might probably find that easier to do. In fact, in an exam, that's probably the more sensible thing to do. But show that you use a quadratic formula and you get these two answers. These are the two answers you get. Um, so now, what it is, how have we got two answers? They're both positive. What does it mean? Well, obviously, on the way up, it was thrown from O. On the way up, it went past B. And on the way down, it went past B again. Now, this is the time that it was going past B on the way up. And this is the time at which it was going past B on the way down. So the one that's less time is going to be T1. Okay, so this is T1 and this is T2. So it's, the question is saying calculate the length of time for which the ball is more than 2 meters above the ground. So we want to find the time between these two times. So after the first time and up to the second time. So if we subtract those two times, it will tell us for how long it was in this region above 2 meters above the ground. So what we want is the time that we need is the second time minus the first time, which is 2 minus 1 over 7, okay, which is going to be um, 14 over 7 minus 1 over 7, which is 13 over 7, okay. Um, I'm going to round that, so you have, just to make sure, 2 minus 1 over 7, whoops, 2 minus 1 over 7, which gives you 13 over 7, which is 1.857. So that's 1.857 dot dot. So it gives you 1.86 seconds. That's the time for which it was above the ground, of two, of more than 2 meters above the ground. So that's the answer for question part B, 1.86 seconds. Okay, now if this was at Excel, we would just use 10 there. And then we probably wouldn't have factorized then, and you would have then had to use a formula and get your answer, which would be close to this. But that's the only difference here between Cambridge and Excel in these questions for M1. All right, so there's the answer to this question here. Any other questions you have from this particular Solomon E paper, you can find in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions you might have from this end of topic worksheet, you can find the playlist for that linked over here. Any questions generally from constant acceleration kinematics from M1 at Excel, you'll find the playlist over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.